Welcome to Position for Impact. Mark chapter 5 and verse 25. It says, and a certain woman. Tell your neighbor, a certain woman. A certain woman. Yes. Which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of the physicians and spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Amen. And straight away, the fountain of, the blood, of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, You see a multitude thronging about you, and you are asking us who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing that what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Amen. And he said unto her daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. Amen. Go in peace and be whole of that infirmity. Amen. Go in peace and be whole. In Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 25. A woman in the crowd suffered a hemorrhage for 12 years. 12 years is a long time. Amen? 12 years is a very long time to be suffering with something. A headache. A, 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 your little toe, if it's hurting you for 12 years, you will not be able to wear any shoes. You can't walk. 12 years with a condition is a long time. Amen? We can all agree. Under the law of Moses, this woman was unclean. She was very unclean. She was not allowed to come anywhere where people were. People were not allowed to sit on the seat that she sat in. So you can imagine she was isolated. She was abandoned. She was alone. Amen. We read that in the book of Leviticus. That she was unclean. Amen. Before Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. They were still following this law. Amen. But we thank God that he sent Jesus Christ to come and fulfill the law. So the handwritings of ordinances... The handwritings of the law that were against us. He nailed it to the cross. He did away with it. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for Jesus. So this condition affected her. It let, left her abandoned. It left her broken. It left her an outcast. Because if her husband was going to be with her, he had to be declared also unclean. So nobody was supposed to be there where she was. She was supposed to be outside the camp. Amen. She was not supposed to come where no, anybody was. So she was not attending church services. Amen. Thank God for Jesus that we can come in the fellowship of believers and raise the name of Jesus high. So she was, she lost everything that she had. She lost her dignity. Sickness is a thief. We rebuke sickness in our midst in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every infirmity in the name of Jesus. Sickness is a thief. Hallelujah. Sickness is a thief. So she was cut off from all her relationships. Nobody could drink from the cup that she was drinking from. Anything she touched was declared unclean. What a life. And then verse 26 says, she had endured much suffering at the hands of many physicians. She had spent all she had and was not helped at all. But instead, she became worse. So all her accounts were depleted. Every single krona that she had saved up, she used it on physicians. But she did not get better. The world has no answer to pacify our pain. The world has no answer to pacify the pain within. Only Jesus can. Hallelujah. This world will leave you worse than you came. I know people who go through so much. They go to drug. They become drug addi addi addicted to drugs. 
but it leaves you worse. Many people become addicted to substance abuse, you know, and it leaves them worse. That is not our portion in the name of Jesus because we know where to run to. Jesus is our refuge and our strength. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. Amen. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, it says it is all meaningless. It is all a chasing after the wind. So we will run to doctors, but doctors can only, you know, alleviate your pain and your symptoms but there is only one name by which we have we've been given under the and, and under the heavens that by that name we shall be saved amen and this is the name of Jesus Jesus removes the pain he removes the symptoms he heals our diseases amen because this is why he was nailed to the cross on Calvary amen to remove he was beaten for our transgressions and the chastisement of our peace was upon him him verse 22 she had heard reports this is from the amplified bible she had heard reports about jesus and she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his outer robe amen he she touched his garment Amen. Because she had said it in herself. Amen. She had said it in herself. That if I can just touch his garment. I don't know if she read this in the Torah. I don't know where she read about this. About touching the hem. But I know that the anointing flows from Aaron's head. Down even to the skirts of his garments. Amen. That is where the power lies. Because when Jesus was crucified. He, he ascended to heaven and said all power. All power has been given unto me. And this power I'm giving it unto you. So the church has been given this power. Power. Amen. So the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of believers. Because when Jesus ascended, he left the power to the local church. Believe it or not, there are many people who are talking against the church. There are many people who are saying, oh, why is there a church at every corner? The church of Jesus marches on. Amen. The church of Jesus will prevail. So we have to do whatever it takes to get to where the power is. This power has been given to the skirts of the garment of Jesus. That is the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. So we have to make up in our minds, uh, I will go to the presence of God. Amen. She came through the crowd. Amen. She had heard there's a crowd and they were moving towards a direction. Amen. They were moving towards a direction. She said, I am going to join this crowd of the holy rollers. Amen. I am going to join this crowd of believers. Amen. I am going to join this crowd of demon bashers. Hallelujah. I am going to join this crowd of tongue talkers. Amen. I am not going to forsake the assembling of the believers. Amen. So he said, she said in herself, I will follow this crowd. You know, when you know Jesus and you have believed the report about Jesus, you will follow where he is. Amen. Hallelujah. Your miracles meet your movement. Amen. Your miracles meet your movement. What are you doing? You know, I had anemia once. I had been at the something that was, was, was eating my blood at some point. My blood was 2% in my body. I didn't know. You know, I just saw that I was, I was, I was, you, you know, um, losing a lot of weight. I was like a skeleton. I was skin and bones. It's hard to believe it, right? But I was. <laughs> I was, I was. And so glory be to Jesus for a little bit of flesh on my bones, amen. Because I know a time where I used to lay down and my bones would be hurting me. So I didn't know how to lay in my bed because I was depleted of blood, amen. So, and then I had to climb. If I climb, climbed three steps, I had to sit down and I had to rest. My heart was almost stopping because I didn't have any blood in my, in my body, when I took three steps, I had, to, I had to sit down and rest because my heart felt like it was going to stop. Now you can imagine this woman for 12 years. I did not suffer for one year because glory be to Jesus for a praying mother. Amen. Glory be to Jesus for a praying mother. She prayed for me. You have to push back. 
You have to push back your situation. Amen. Don't sit down and think about these symptoms and say, oh, but the doctor said, oh, but the doctor said, oh, but the lawyer said, oh, but my teacher said, oh, but my pastor said. We have to push back. Amen. We cancel every bad report of the enemy over our lives in Jesus' name. We have to push back and say, no, I will go where the power is. I will go where Jesus is and I know that I will be made whole. Faith does not take the easy road. This woman, you can imagine, I'm sure she was weak in herself. She was so weak in herself. Even to get up was a problem. But she, she got up. Her miracle started when she started thinking. Amen. Her miracle started when she said to herself, I have heard about the man of Galilee. I have heard that he cleanses the lepers. I have heard that he heals the sick. I have heard that when he touches the lame, they get up from their beds of infirmity and they start to walk. I have heard about this man of Galilee and I shall believe this report. Church today, whose report shall you believe? I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Her miracle began with her believing the report of Jesus. Amen. What she heard about Jesus. Church, let us choose to believe Jesus. Amen. Let let us choose to believe what we've heard about Jesus. He healed the sick. I love this man of Galilee. He cleansed the lepers. He picked me up from the clay and he set me upon a rock to stand. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Her miracle included breaking the law. She broke the law. Can you imagine she was supposed to be stoned to death? Her miracle included breaking the law. Oh, Catherine, but the Bible says we should obey the laws of the land. But whose law is higher? If Jesus says, I can, I am healing and I can hear him passing by, I better break every law and go where Jesus is. Amen. She had to look for Jesus. Amen. She heard Jesus was coming. Did she know which one he was? Did she know? Let us just try to use our imagination. She didn't know which one he was. So she started going through the crowds, going through the crowds. That is her miracle included looking for Jesus in her weak state, in her state that she could not even walk. She was crawling down and looking for Jesus. How many will tell me today that I want to look for Jesus no matter the situation that I find myself in? So her miracle included breaking of the obstacles. Hallelujah. People who are filled with faith, they pursue the truth. Amen. People who are filled with faith pursue the truth. They pursue the word of God. Amen. I'm not saying we are gullible. No. When, when we read the word, we know what the word says. We go there. Amen. We go where the power is. Hallelujah. We go where the anointing is. And then verse 28 says, for she thought. What are we thinking? This, this uh, King James says, for she said, for she said, what are we saying? What are we saying? Am I saying the lawyer said this case is impossible? Am I saying the immigration said this is impossible? Or am I standing on the promises of God today? Am I standing on the promises of God? What are you deliberating in your mind today? What are you meditating upon today? The word says, let the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. For they that come to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Amen. She said to herself, what are you saying to yourself today? Saying is a spiritual principle. Amen. Saying is a spiritual principle. Because in the beginning we read, God said, let there be light. God said, God said, God said, God said. We can read it in Genesis 1. God said, what are you saying? When God said, he created light. He created things. He created, are your words bringing life? Or are they bringing death? What are your words saying this afternoon, church? What are your words saying? The more you say it, the more you have it. Amen. So we speak health. 
We speak life. We speak abundance. We speak prosperity. We speak peace. We speak grace. We speak love. We speak peace in every situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Your words must change. My words must change. And they must align with the word of God. Amen. They must align with what God is saying about me. Is he saying that I'm saved? Then I am saved. Is he saying I'm delivered? Then I'm delivered. Is he saying that I'm set free? Then I'm set free. Is he saying that I'm, I'm prosperous? Then I am prosperous in the name of Jesus. You know, confession is more than just a faith lingo. Oh, they said this. I heard them saying this in the church. And oh, it happened. It is more than a faith lingo. It is a conviction, very deep conviction in the heart. Amen. I know of a sister, God told her, do not take this medicine. She stopped taking the medicine and she was made whole. That was her faith. That was her faith. If you feel that your headache cannot handle, you know, faith, then take a Panadol. But that is your faith. L let Be led by your faith. Amen. Like this woman, she did not go and asking. She didn't ask, oh, Michaela, what do you think? She didn't ask, oh, Elisha, what do you think? She said to herself. She didn't go to her husband and says, what do you think? The husband would have told her, no, you're not going anywhere. You'll be stoned to death. Her children would have said, no, you're not going anywhere. So sometimes you need to lock yourself up in the room and speak to yourself. Amen. And speak to your situation. Hallelujah. And speak to yourself. It is more than a, a, a faith lingo. It is just not a language we learn in the church and say, you know, it is well. When you know very well, you, you are busted, sad and disgusted. You, you, you don't know where, where, whether you're coming, whether you're going, or whether you're gone. So it is more than a faith lingo. But faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. For anyone who is feeling weak in their faith today, I pray that God will anoint us with a fresh wind of his faith in Jesus' name, that we may please him. What matters about what comes from your, what matters is what comes from your mouth has to coincide with what is in your heart. Amen. So what is in my heart if I'm thinking that, okay, this situation is very terrible. Ooh, the lawyer told me this. I went to the immigration, they told me this. Then I have to build up my holy faith. Amen. The Bible says, build up yourselves in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. May God give us that anointing to be able to press through in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have to act on our faith. Hallelujah. May God increase our faith. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, increase our faith, oh God. Increase our faith, Jesus. Increase the faith of everyone, oh God. You know every heart in this place. You know what we are believing God. Increase our faith. Jesus in Jesus name amen we have to press through the opinions we have to press through the limitations by faith Jesus in the name of Jesus amen by faith in Jesus amen, amen. verse 29 immediately her flow of blood was dried up she felt in her body the amplifier said and she knew with no doubt she knew with no doubt amen she knew with no doubt that she, had, she was healed of her suffering. You know, when I was, I, was, I was anemic one time, and then a friend of mine came to see me. When I was healed, I knew power has come back to my body. And I started washing. In Africa, we wash clothes, you know, with our hands. So I was busy, you know, in the laundry room washing clothes. And this friend of mine came and said, No, Catherine, what are you doing? Please get back. Get out of there. Please go and sit down. Because this friend had seen me fainting. Fainting. You know, couldn't keep down food. Saw me fainting. You know. But I knew in myself I was healed. I knew in myself that I was set free. I knew in myself that strength had come back to me. So it has to be a conviction. Amen. She knew immediately that she felt, oh God, that, that God had healed her. Amen. She was healed of her suffering immediately. One touch from Jesus. Amen. One touch from Jesus is all we need. One touch of his hand is all we need. One word of Jesus is 
is all that we need. Amen. The physicians had left her. Worse that she came. Her friends left her empty and down and abandoned. Amen. But Jesus touched her and she was made whole. Your addictions will leave you empty. I know that for a fact. Your addictions will leave you empty. They will leave you wanting for more. But when you touch, you are touched by Jesus, he says, you will never thirst again. Hallelujah. Thank you for that living water, oh God. We will never thirst again. Vain is the help of man. I'm not saying that we should not love on our friends and help our friends in time of need. But vain is the help of man. What if your friend is not there? Where will we run to? We run to Jesus who touches the hearts of men to be able to help us. Amen. We run to Jesus. Amen. So let us not put our trust in man. Doctors have been given the expertise. I'm also a medic. I'm also in the medical field. You know, but we can do so much. And then God has to take the rest. Amen. Leave it to Jesus. Amen. I have touched the hem of his garment and my life will never be the same. So immediately Jesus, recognizing in himself that power had gone out, there is a faith that makes Jesus stand at attention. The disciples were like, ah, what are you talking about? All these people, they've been pushing and shoving. Were they shoving in faith? Were they touching him in faith? You know, coming to church is just coming to church. But there's a faith that touches God. May God anoint us with that faith today in the name of Jesus. The faith that will make Jesus stand at attention and say, something has gone out of me. Someone has touched me with faith. Someone has touched me and virtue has gone out of me. I want to be that woman who touches Jesus with my worship. I want to be that woman who touches Jesus with my faith. So he looked around and said, who touched me? When we start acting on our faith, we get the attention of God. May we get the attention of God. Amen. We capture his attention. Amen. May we capture the attention of God this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Faith without works is dead. That's what the Bible says. So we see this woman, she acted on what she had faith for. Amen. She knew Jesus was in town. Amen. And I know when Jesus is in town, I know he's in the neighborhood. Amen. I know that if he solves Sister Nancy's problem, my problem is not big for, too big for him to solve. He's in the neighborhood. Amen. I know that he will also touch me. Amen. I will reach up to Jesus and touch him with my faith. His disciples said unto him, you see the crowd pressing and you say, who touched me still he kept looking because he knew someone had touched him with faith may you be that woman amen may you be that woman and the woman thought though she was afraid and trembling aware of what had happened to her came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth told him the whole truth i was abandoned I was despised. I was rejected. I was cast out. They talked about me. They ridiculed me. They made fun of me. They asked me, where is my God? They said, your God is dead. Oh, why don't you go to the witch doctor? Oh, your God is not hearing you. She told Jesus the whole truth. She said, I have been to the physicians. I have spent all my money. I have stayed up awake all night. I've been crying, oh my God. I have, I, have, I have stayed up. I have been angry at my husband. I have been angry at my children. She told him the whole truth. She went to Jesus and told him the whole truth because she knew Jesus will not look at her funny. Jesus will not go talking about her. Jesus will not go and tell her friend and his friends, oh, I have some hot news for you. He knew that this man is the one that is able to sort all my problems out. Out. Amen. Amen. 
We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Amen. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. May God give us a testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus. May God give us a testimony. A lasting testimony in the name of Jesus. That the ends of the earth will know that hey, this is God that has done this one in Jesus name. Then he said to her daughter. Your faith, the Amplified said, your personal trust and confidence in me has restored you to health. Go in peace and be permanently healed from your suffering. Permanently. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me. It shall be permanent, it shall be permanent, it shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for you, it shall be permanent. First Peter 2.10 says, once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Amen. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Amen. We read when we started reading this story, it said a certain woman. We don't know her name. A certain woman. A certain woman. She went from a certain woman to daughter. She became part of the family. She became part of God's family. Hallelujah. Where we were once forsaken. He drew us by his mercy. Amen. He drew us by his mercy and his loving kindness. Amen. He calls us beloved. He calls you beloved. He calls us beloved. Jesus goes from being the man who performs miracles. <laughs> To being my daddy. That man. I've heard about that man. Of Galilee. But now he's my father. Amen. But now he is my father. Amen. Are you exhausted from fighting a battle? Are you exhausted? Is your heart tired? Are you tired of that issue? Are you tired of that situation? Reach out to Jesus. Amen. Whatever our issue. Do you feel like your family is falling apart? Reach out to Jesus. Amen. Are you feeling like your children are haywire? Way, way Reach out to Jesus. Amen. Do you feel like your relationships are failing around you? Reach out to Jesus. Because I know a man. Amen. I know a man who healed the lepers. I know a man who sets captives free. I know a man when he touches you. My heart weeps no more. Amen. Your heart will weep no more. Amen. I know a man when he touches you. You will know no infirmity anymore. I know a man when he touches you. Your life will never be the same again. it is all in the word of God. Amen. His word is life and it is spirit. And it goes inside you to heal you, to restore you. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says in Luke 6, verse 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over, shall man give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. I counted the words in that scripture. There's 40 words. Only one is for you. 
the rest is for God to be concerned about. The word for you is give. What follows is for God to do. Amen. Our concern is not to fill our baskets so they are running over. Amen. He is the one that will give unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's his job. But it is activated by a simple act of faith called give. Give. This woman we heard about today, she had that gift of faith. She said, I have to. There's a Bible commentary that says about this woman that she said to herself. She repeatedly spoke to herself. I have to. I have to. I have to touch the hem of his garment. And I will be made whole. What God gives unto you when you give is not your concern. Your children may not run haywire. Amen? Because you gave. Forget about money for just a second. Give your time. Give your time in prayer, in His Word, seeking Him, touching the hem of His garment. He will give unto you beauty instead of ashes. Amen? He is the restorer, the rebuilder of your life, the beautifier of your life. Amen? He is the one that showed mercy. Amen? When we give, we activate something in heaven. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you right now that you have treasures in heaven stored up for us, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that we can give into your kingdom to be a part of your kingdom, to bless your kingdom, Father, that your kingdom may go forward in this nation, Father. We thank you for every giver. We thank you for every gift and every seed song, Father. We thank you.